Assistant Secretary C, dear participants, ladies and gentlemen. I wanted to come for the opening of this seminar, but I am no less pleased to join you for the closing. You have had three days of intensive work behind you, so let me be brief. During those three days, you have learned more about the tools and techniques for detection and investigation of anti-competitive practices with focus on cartels. I see this as a very timely event, and I would like to congratulate the Department of Justice and its Office for Competition and the Assistant Secretary C for having initiated it. Timely because this administration is convinced of the need to step up its regulatory framework on competition. This has, is a very welcome development in the larger context of efforts to creating a more favorable investment climate and level playing fields for economic operators. I know that I do not have to convince any one of you of the benefit of a modern competition framework, but let me just sum up the most essential element. It encourages economic efficiencies and competitiveness. Being more competitive internationally means more exports which helps create jobs, produce welfare, and reduce poverty. More competition widens consumer choice, lowers prices, and increases the quality of products and services. In order to be competitive, companies need to be innovative, most essential in the 21st century globalized economy. This administration has put good governance at the forefront of its political agenda, and indeed, an adequate competition framework can make an important contribution in this regard. For example, regulators could benefit from greater independence to insulate them from undue pressure, whether from the private or the public sector. In addition, I understand that the nominal penalties in existing legal status, dating back many decades, have been so eroded by inflation to be ineffective deterrent. 6,000 pesos are not likely to scare off a potential culture. In both cases, an updated legal framework can help. I hope that this framework, which also reflects international best practices, will become reality soon. Of course, getting the regulatory framework right is one thing. And I understand the legislative branch has prioritized the pending bills, making them work in practice is yet another. This is the context of the past three days of seminar. How to detect and investigate anti-competitive practices, which tool to use, and how to identify cartels. As is so often, the devil is in the details. I'm pleased to see that you have been guided by Caroline Galbraith, who has quite a unique experience hands-on experience in this area, both from the EU and a US perspective. The European Union has early realized that in order to create a common market of today 500 million people and 27 member states, it will not only have to ensure free movement of goods, services, capital and labor within its border, not only establish a common trade policy, but it also needs a common rules on competition. We are more than happy to share the experience we gained in the process with the Philippines and support in its effort to develop its own competition policy. I'm therefore glad to see that this event today is less the end but the beginning of an engagement. Indeed, the EU-Philippine trade-related technical assistance project, third phase, scheduled to start later this year and with a total budget of 448 million pesos has identified capacity building in relation to competition policy as one of the five key areas of support. Let me close by welcoming the wide-ranging participation at this seminar and the vivid and fruitful exchanges as I was told. I am particularly pleased to see a cooperative spirit among the OFC and the sector regulators, and look forward to seeing this cooperative arrangement clarified through Executive Order 45 implementing rules. I see this as an encouraging sign for the way forward as the Philippines wants to 
further step up its effort in ensuring fair competition and a level playing field. Marin Salamatko. Thank you very much.